So is free the new normal, the new foot in the door, the best way to get that involvement, the engagement, those freebies, those gifts? Is this the new world? Stay tuned. Maximize your influence. Kurt Mortensen is the author of Persuasion IQ, Laws of Charisma, and the best-selling book, Maximum Influence. All right. Thanks for being here. Kurt Mortensen here. This is Podcast 524, Maximize Your Influence, where we take a deep dive on persuasion, motivation, influence, self-persuasion, mindset, negotiation, people skills. Should I go on those soft skills that make the biggest difference in your life, your income, your relationships? You know that. That's why you're here. Please tell your family and friends and enemies about the podcast. We can be found at iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and iHeartRadio. So let's get into this free thing and talk about it. And you're like, I don't want to give away things for free. They should pay for it. Well, maybe it does increase sales. It does increase persuasion. Let's talk about the science, why it works, and how to use it. But first, hopefully you're having a great week. You're doing some good things. You're helping those around you. You're mastering the science and techniques of persuasion and influence. Let's start off with the persuasion, not blunder this week, but ninja. And I'm going to take the honors. I just remembered this the other day. This happened to me. I was a kid. I was probably, I don't know, between five and seven years old. And the rule with my mom is you had to take a bath. And I hated baths. I wanted to take a shower. But in her mind, if you took a shower, your hair got wet. You're going to catch cold. You're going to go to bed with a wet head. And it's just going to be a mess. And we went back and forth, tried to... No, I want a shower. I'm old enough. I want a shower. But it had to be a bath. And again, I hated baths. Sitting in that water, just didn't like it. I wanted a shower just like everyone else. And so I'm not sure where it came from, how it happened, but we negotiated a deal. And this is the deal I proposed. At that time, I had a green plastic army helmet, strap and everything. I don't know where I got it, but I had it. And it was waterproof. And the deal was, if I wore this army helmet in the shower, my hair wouldn't get wet. So win, win. I could have spent my whole life fighting about this. But in her mind, having wet hair is a bad thing. You can't go to bed with that. Not good, not healthy. That was the mindset. And we came to a compromise, a mutual win-win. And that's the key to all negotiations. Now, remember, win-win does not mean equal splits, especially in a financial situation. But this was a role where everyone was happy. And that's the key to understand. Because the blunder for most people is you fight it out, you fight it out, you prove your worth, let's show the science, let's show the studies, let's do this. No, if we can talk, learn to meet in the middle, and try to understand for the most part, most of us want the same thing. But if you can get in their shoes, find out their wants and their needs, what is the real true issue here? Find a win-win. Life is going to be much better for you, less conflict, Less anger, less anxiety if you're willing to do that. But if you have the mindset, have to take a bath no matter what or whatever the situation is, and you're not willing to budge to listen to their point of view, to listen to other alternatives, then it's going to be very difficult for you to negotiate, to persuade, and influence. So such a simple thing, but a great lesson from the army helmet that I learned when I was a kid. The outcome is what you're looking for. To where, all right, go ahead, take a shower, wear your helmet, everyone's happy, no more argument, and to this day, I still shower, no, I don't, (laughs) just kidding, I don't shower with the army helmet, but I did when I was a child. All right, with that, let's get into our geeky, scarly article. This comes from Journal of Retailing, University of Wisconsin, Madison, and Brigham Young University. Talking about how free samples, that's what we'll be talking about today, increase sales, work better than end-of-aisle promotions. Now, an end-of-aisle promotion, you probably know this at a grocery store, that at the end of the aisle, that's where most people see what's going on. That's where you want your product. That's where you want the promotions because it's very, very successful. So they're going to say that eating free samples at big box stores like Costco have become a weekend tradition for many shoppers. And let me say, I have a lot of college students that just go there on Saturdays for their lunch, for their dinner, because there are so many free samples. So you want to see just how effective are these free samples? 
And then they dropped the number that marketers spend more than $2 billion every year on these samples. And they said after the research, it's a definitive yes. So they found a couple things that are interesting that smaller stores that have a smaller assortment of products benefit more from sampling than the larger, bigger stores. Probably because if you go to these smaller stores, you're looking for something specific and it's probably the sample. In a Costco, in a larger store, it's just random. You're like, well, I don't know if I want to try your deep fried pickles or your cheese curd. That might not be the reason you're there and you might already feel that you don't like those things. Then they also found that sampling does do better than the end of aisle displays. And that's easy to understand. I mean, you have a person, you have a sample, it's just not a picture. There's a lot more interaction, engagement, and we're going to talk about that. So according to the study, end of aisle displays lose steam after two weeks, whereas the effects of sampling lingers for many weeks. So it's not only the interaction, it lasts a lot longer and you get immediate results. Now, if you go to a store quite a bit, after you've seen that end of aisle display after a few days, a few weeks, they say, you probably doesn't even register in your mind anymore. I mean, like a billboard on a freeway or a highway, when it changes, you notice it, but after a couple days, you've seen it a few times, you don't notice it anymore. Now, another interesting thing they found that sampling by one brand led to an increased sales in all brands. So if you're testing out a new soda, all the soda brands had an increase in sales. Interesting, huh? I guess you remember how much you like soda or whatever the sample is, and you might go to your favorite brand or the brand that you're used to buying. So here's the bottom line. Increase in sales both immediate and in an extended time frame. And sampling has better sustained sales than end of aisle displays. Now I was also looking at another article, The Psychology of Free from lightspeedhq.com and Dan Ariely. We've talked about him on the show. He's an incredible behavioral economist at Duke University. And this is also sponsored by Cornell University. So they go into that same too, free samples, it costs money to give away free food or any free product. We see it all the time. And Dan Arelli says, if I give you a tiny bit of chocolate, right, like a sample, all of a sudden it would remind you about the exact taste of chocolate and would increase your craving. And that's true. I mean, a sample's not much. You get a little square of chocolate and you're going to remember, I love chocolate. You're going to crave it more. You're going to buy the whole bar of chocolate. One study they worked on was from a pretzel crisps and they found conversion rates were 30% higher when products were sampled. Now, this goes back to one of the laws of persuasion, law of reciprocity. When somebody gives you something, you have the urge to buy something, give something back. If you get a sample, let's say at a Costco, a large store, it doesn't mean you're going to buy, but you might have the urge, the reciprocity, to at least listen or look at it or consider it. But the sense of obligation is strong, but it has to be worth their time, right? I mean, I get plenty of postcards where, hey, free meal at my favorite restaurant. Then you have to sit for a 60-minute presentation on retirement or investments. Is that free meal worth 60 minutes? I mean, some people say yes, some people say no, but it has to be worth their time to go get that sample or whatever that freebie is. So they go on to say, when you incorporate free samples into your business strategy, your customer will feel warm and welcomed. It allows you to introduce new products to your audience, unfamiliar with your business. It helps with a relationship and customer loyalty. It helps people that don't know about you to know more about you. It encourages repeat customers. And so Professor Michael Gomez from Cornell said, look, these tastings, these freebies can turn a satisfied customer into a highly satisfied customer. So you not only get new customers, you're switching customers from satisfied to highly satisfied. And not only that, it increases across the board brand loyalty. So interesting, free, can we do this? Now this is obvious at a Costco, let's say a supermarket, but how do you use this for your internet business, for your business, for any business? Let's talk about a few of these. And this goes to a listener email. Oh boy! And by the way, send me an email, Kurt at MaximizeYourInfluence.com. We use anything, your suggestion, your humor, your bad humor, your blunder, your ninja, whatever it is on the show, you get free gold version of InfluenceUniversity.com just for helping us out and showing us your love. Now, remember, you can find those articles, info on InfluenceUniversity.com, your free persuasion IQ assessment, advanced materials, all at MaximizeYourInfluence.com. This is from Pete. 
from Green Bay. That's in Wisconsin, the United States. So thanks, Kurt. Loving the podcast. I've been listening to Maximize Your Influence from beginning to end. Wow, pat yourself on the back. Those over 500 episodes. I do appreciate that. Heard you talk about free is the great first step. Is that still true? Does it really increase sales? Does it really increase engagement? Tell me about some of the latest research and studies. So it was true back then, and it's even more true now. Because it's not just a Costco grocery thing. We showed you the research that's true. Remember, I mentioned conversion rates are 30% higher. Of course, that's in a Costco grocery store setting. Again, it's hard to take that free sample and just walk away. I mean, some people have done it so many times, they can. <laughs> but you still feel that reciprocity, that obligation to at least listen, look at the box, pretend you like it. They try not to make eye contact and take the sample. <laughs> Another interesting study I was looking at, that 70% will try the sample when asked. That's kind of interesting. I don't know, the other 30% might be in a hurry, don't care, don't want to feel that obligation. But of that 70%, 37%, so a little over 50%, will buy the product. So 70% when asked will take it, and half of those will buy it. Another research published in the Journal of Retailing found that free samples increases purchases, both short-term and long-term. And this is one we'll be talking about, helped overcome initial resistance to try new products and built customer trust. So remember that sample, that chocolate creates a desire for the product. Now it has to be good. <laughs> Whatever your product or service is, you have to be good and people have to like it. Now a study in the Journal of Market Research found, and they call it the freemium model, that for other products, offering something for free, getting them in there, getting them used to it, and then offering advanced features for something they pay for. That's what almost every service site on the internet, they have a free, basic, basic, use our product, get people in, get them using it. And then, of course, they have all these other advanced cool features that you need to pay for. We see this in software. We see this on the internet. This could be a trial period. That also increases conversion rates. So you get the whole thing for 30 days, the whole software, the whole website. That does significantly boost conversion rates. Another study found that those who are engaged, that's the key, not just sign up for it, but engaged, with using that type of a product during a free trial period, we're more likely to convert to paying customers. Where do we see this? Companies like Dropbox, Spotify, LinkedIn offer free offerings, but they use that to drive user acquisition and revenue growth. Like Dropbox, they get a limited amount of free storage and they're eventually gonna run out and they can pay for more. They like it, they use it, they don't wanna go someplace else and that's something you need to think about. We talk about verbal packaging. That's one of the 12 laws of persuasion, maximum influence. Just the word free, it grabs people's attention. Dan Ariely also talks about that in Predictably Irrational, that there's something about that word. It grabs attention. For example, I remember a study where they showed people, okay, it's half price, it's 50% off, buy one, get one free. Now, use your logical mind here. Half price, 50% off, buy one, get one free is all the same price, all the same thing. But it's no secret that buy one, get one free out pulled half price and 50% off. And another one from the Journal of Marketing found that these freebies helps repeat purchase rates over longer periods of time. So why is this persuasive? Why does this work? The first one is risk reduction. If they're sitting on the fence, let them try it, let them use it, let them do it especially for high cost or unfamiliar products. It reduces the barriers to entry. When you're offering a free 30-day trial or a basic version of your product, your software, your service, it's easy to get started with free. I'll sign up for free, let me try it. Prove your worth. Get them involved, get them engaged, get them using it. They get to experience the value, the benefits of your product or service firsthand. And it leads to a better understanding of how your product or service can solve their problems and meet their needs. It also builds trust that A, you're willing to do it, you're giving it away for free. It shows your confidence in your product's quality and effectiveness. And it just signals again that your company believes in your product. And when it's free like that, it increases customer engagement, increases familiarity, increases the chance of a purchase when the trial ends. It's not 100%, there's no guarantee, but it does help. It also, as a company, allows you to 
do data collection. You're finding out who's interested. They might not join after your free trial, but you can still send out emails and texts and other things to them to let them know that you're still there. Maybe it wasn't 100% appropriate at the time, but it could be in the future. You're finding out who's interested. It allows you to market research, get feedback from giving away free things. And a big one too in the persuasion world, it helps overcome objections. They don't have to have objections. Try it out. Use it. See it. Taste it. Touch it. Feel it. Get involved. Get engaged. They're going to overcome their own objections. I remember helping a company work with high-end coaching products, group coaching calls. I said, invite them to the orientation call. Let them know that the people on there have paid. Social validation. They got on, heard how excited they were, got a sampling of the coaching, and that drove a huge increase in sales. And you get them into the habit and the dependency. A lot of these 30-day trials, you get so dependent on it, you have to continue. You need it, you want it, you like it, you're using it, you're making money with it. People want to keep doing it. And it's an investment of time and emotions for them to do this. It increases the likelihood that they're going to purchase and be persuaded. And once they're in too, it gives you opportunities for upselling, cross-selling, doing different things, additional products and services after the free offering. So what could you do? free 30 days, free smaller version of whatever you're doing? Is it a free estimate, educational blog post, a free ebook, white paper? I know in the past I've offered free persuasion software that persuaded for you, free webinar, maybe a template, a checklist, a guide, a case study, a success story, a mini course, email challenges. I offer free persuasion IQ assessments, free presentation IQ assessments, to prove worth, to offer value to people, to see where they rank and how to fix those areas of weaknesses and improve those areas of strengths. Exclusive newsletters, interactive quizzes. You can use this in any business, in any sales, any type of persuasion, influence, or service. And this also simplifies the process. For example, you have a photocopier, it's working pretty good. There's a new version like, oh, I don't know, I don't want to learn it, whatever. Do we really need it? Hey, let me just give it to you for six months. Try it out. They get used to it. They learn it. They like it. Then the sale becomes easier. Well, think about cars. Test drive. It's free. You don't charge for it. Get them in the door. Try it out for free. Free hot dogs, free popcorn, free cookies. Get them in there. So there's a variety of ways you can use this. Don't be afraid. Give it away. Prove your worth. That's the key here. Free is good now more than ever. I told you why it works. I gave you a sampling of different things that you can do. But one thing to just kind of really think about here, when you give away something for free, it's not something you found in your garage, maybe a product that didn't sell very well. It's something that they really want. I mean, when you look at infomercials, for example, they talk about their product. You don't get you excited about it, but then they have all these bonuses and people do it for the bonuses, those freebies, the things they're giving away. They've got to be excited about. They want the bonuses more than the actual product or service. So you have to ask yourself, is what you're giving away, your freebie, your gift, valuable? Is it useful to your prospect? Do they need it? Will they enjoy it? Does it have a high perceived value? And that's a key here for you. High perceived value to them, low cost to you. Again, you didn't find it in the garage or <laughs> sitting in inventory. It's something that's valuable. And targeted. Does your gift, your freebie, reach a specific demographic, the people that you're looking for? Does it solve a problem, give you credibility, prove your worth? So look for it. You're going to see it everywhere and think, can I do that? Can I adjust this? Can I use that in my business? Can I do that in my sales? It is everywhere. Even the mattress you sleep on. Try it out for 60 days for free. No obligation. Send it back if you don't want it. This is something that you can implement. So take something, one suggestion that I had today, and think about your business, your sales, what you do, how you influence. Even as a leader and a manager, freebies, helping people out, serving other people, giving things away can be very beneficial for your relationship. So thanks for being here. You can register for my free email at Maximize Your Influence. It's also the free Persuasion IQ assessment and a way to get a free coaching session for me. I do it. I know it works. I love to prove my worth. Even InfluenceUniversity.com has a free introductory membership. And that's the special. InfluenceUniversity.com slash special. 
or go to the podcast 524, hit the link. InfluenceUniversity.com is the place of the 52-week advanced program. You can go to the library. You can check out the persuasion software that persuades for you. The top 77 objections and how to solve those. The videos, the audios, the books, all in one place. It's now on special for $97 for the year. But wait, there's more. As a freebie, I am going to gift you a lifetime membership for getting enrolled. Do it. Make it happen. So there it is. Take it, use it, master it, become a better influencer, a better leader, a better negotiator, a better influencer, and go out and persuade with power.